Donc, euh, bonjour à tous, bonjour à tous. Et maintenant, je vais changer en euh, anglais parce que en français, ça marche pas si vite. So, uh, hello to you all. Uh, in the name of Fersinova, I would like to uh, welcome you also here. Uh, and I will give you a little introduction in uh, Fertinova. I will not do it alone because, uh, as uh, Michel already told you, the expert for uh, the results of the region here is Esther Le Chevalier, so she will help me uh, with the detailed information. But I will start to give you a short impression of what Fertinova is, and after Esther's talk, I will give you a short uh, talk also on what we will be doing the next uh, years. Fertinoa, you heard a lot, but what does it mean? So uh, Fertinoa it is not a typical research project. We will not carry out typical research, but we will do what they call actions for a thematic network. We will bring existing knowledge together and then spread it out again in different regions and in different crops and uh, systems. But you will see that in a minute. The focus of Fertinoa is towards vegetable uh, fruits, but also to ornamentals, so it's quite broad. And the budget you will see is three million. You think it's a lot of money, but I'm not the only one in Fertinoa, Esther even also. We have 23 partners and many more people working on the Fertinoa actions. So we will present it in the name of Fertinoa, but a lot of people are working on this uh, very uh, convinced and dedicated to, pre to actually uh, do the Fertinova actions. So why is there a need for a thematic network like Fertinova? Well, first and all, in 2012-2013, there was a benchmark study in, the, in Europe on behalf of the Flemish Land Agency. And it revealed that growers all over Europe are struggling to achieve sufficient and uh, qualitative irrigation water. We also saw that the use of irrigation water in a more efficient way is causing problems. Growers do not manage to use it in a more efficient way. And also growers are struggling to avoid runoff. Leaching towards the groundwater is a problem also leaching towards the surface water. On the other hand, we see that there is a lot of knowledge available and also a lot of innovative technologies. What we also see is that at the growers level at the farms, we do not find these kind of uh, technologies implemented. And that's where we come in. So Fertinova, we will try to bridge that gap and to make uh, existing technologies impl being implemented on the farm's level. And how will we do that? We'll do it in three steps. And today, I'm very glad we can present you the, the results of the first step we made. And this is about mapping the current situation. What is going on at the growers level? Because if we want to make uh, changes on a growers level, we should start from the growers level and all people involved in, in innovation and also we will see legislation, also industry, will have to start thinking like a grower. So we also will map the needs and bottlenecks. And this is what today is uh, all about, mapping the needs and bottlenecks of the growers. And that is the time I will give the word to Esther because she has done a lot of work with her team uh, on mapping these uh, current situations. So, Esther, it's up to you. So, hello everybody, I'm, uh, <laughs> I'm uh, Esther, uh, I will stay in English um, and uh, I will present you the first step, the, the actions that we were actually doing uh, this year uh, within Fertinova. So, Fertinova started in January and this year the, the main topic was uh, to um, make an inventory, a mapping of the knowledge that is uh, already available on, uh, on fertigation and also uh, make a state of the art of the use of of fertigation uh, in uh, in Europe. So uh, for the um, the first step was a review of the uh, already available technologies. What are the technologies that are uh, um, that are uh, available uh, for the use of sustainable water sources? Uh, what are the technologies and techniques available for to increase the water and nutrient use efficiency, and also to minimize the impact uh, on the environment? So that's the three main axes of uh, Fertinova. We we saw that there. Are, um, um, 
bottlenecks and uh, some problems in, in this three axis. So we were focusing really on those three topics. So the bottlenecks uh, mapping, uh, it can be technical bottlenecks. For example, you cannot adapt the technology to your system or to your crop. Uh, it can be socio-economic bottlenecks. So uh, if you are um, not uh, able to make investment to get the te technologies, and also uh, sometimes you can have uh, regulatory bottlenecks that you want to implement in techniques or a technology that uh, you can have um, um, limitation uh, uh, within uh, with the law. So for this uh, first step, uh, so we start with uh, two, uh, two things this year. So we start mapping the information available uh, from the expert knowledge and uh, information available in the literature. So we have uh, in our consortium a lot of experts on the topics of uh, fatigation. So actually they are reviewing uh, technical fact checks and research on paper and uh, previous project and uh, they are gathering the data and information on techniques and technologies for fatigation management. And the second, uh, the second uh, topic is to get the information at the growers level, like my colleague said. This is the very important things because uh, we need to see uh, how the growers manage, uh, why do they uh, do the way they do, <laughs> and uh, why, what are the problems that they meet, and what are the solutions that are still not available for them. So there are still uh, needs for, for Gower to, to cover. Um, so that's why uh, we directly asked to them uh, during this year. So this is the bottom up approach, taking the needs from the bottom uh, to uh, find the solutions. So uh, the, main, uh, uh, the main objective of the first part was to understand the uses, the choices and needs uh, of the growers. So we built a nice uh, questionnaire for growers that was very long and very complete. Uh, it was uh, about uh, 165 questions. It was covering our, all the systems uh, possible uh, with some adaptation. For example, if you have soilless crops, you will have not have the same question than so soil-bound crops. Um, so there were some questions uh, with multi-choice answers, some questions with open-ended answers. So we tried to cover our, almost all the topics in fatigation that the grower are dealing with. Uh, so the, the questionnaire, uh, we ask questions about the quarter conception, what are uses, uh, the type of cropping system because they are thinking of their fertigation, of course, uh, depending on their cropping system, and also uh, how they monitor the, the water management uh, and the fertigation management, and also how they manage with the effluents. So uh, during this uh, summer, we carried out uh, with uh, our the 20, with um, 17 partners of uh, of Fertinova. We carried out uh, a lot of surveys uh, all over Europe to to meet the growers and ask them the questionnaire. So we have uh, 352 recorded interviews and uh, some interviews were included more than one cropping system. Uh, sometimes the grower are going uh, several cropping system with a different management. So uh, we had uh, 500 cropping systems. So you can see a map uh, from the, um, the countries and the, the, the places where the um, the, the survey uh, were, were happening and also we had some surveys in South Africa. So where are the investigated farms? So basically where are the partners of Fertinova? So Netherlands, UK, Belgium and France for the Northwest region. Uh, Central uh, Eastern zone uh, with Poland, Slovenia and Mediterranean zone uh, with a lot of interviews and mainly Spanish people, uh, French Mediterranean zone and Italy. Um, 
Yeah, so we, we, we try to divide uh, some of the analysis into the region level because uh, those uh, regions are really have uh, big differences in their climate. So that's explaining uh, part of the, the technologies or the system that are implemented there. So uh, during the questionnaire, so we investigated 60% uh, uh, soilless cropping system, but actually it's depending a lot of, uh, on the region, because for example in the Northwest region, 80% uh, of the investigated uh, farms that were using fatigation, they were soilless, but if you go to the Central Eastern region, it's only 20% uh, uh, that were in soilless, so the, all those others were soil grown crops. Um, so there were most of the of the um, interviews were carried out on one system. So the growers are as uh, one main system in fertigation, and some other uh, have more systems. So the main crops are investigated were vegetables. So a lot of diversity in soilless and soil ground. Uh, fruits uh, with orchards or soft fruit, and also ornamentals uh, with potted plant or covered um, protected uh, plant. So we had a high diversity of systems and a huge diversity of uh, water management and also uh, needs from the growers. So uh, I will show you some pre preliminary results of uh, the survey. So one uh, first topic was the use of uh, water sources. So uh, this is um, the sustainable water sources are an objective for Fertinova. So for example, here I will show some example. Here we are in soilless crop. Uh, we are uh, observing some uh, differences between the region. So we can see that uh, in Northwest region, the rainwater use is uh, quite developed, and um, also the the drainage reused. Uh, you can see in uh, in blue, it's the drainage reused. So there is a recirculation, and this is quite developed in the Northwest region. But when you go to the south, uh, Central Eastern and Mediterranean region, it's not so developed. So we see that the growers have uh, different sources, and they may have different objectives for um, different use of water sources. So uh, I will show you an example of the question we asked them. So what would you help you to press what to what would help you help to persuade you to use uh, more water, uh, more sustainable water sources? So basically the first answer if uh, if it's affordable. So the, we saw that a lot of uh, questions uh, answers were coming from the economic part. So the um, the, the water sources uh, should be affordable if uh, we want them to to use it. Um, uh, there is also, for example, a big investment uh, capacity needs, for example, in rainwater storage. So that can be a, a bottleneck. Uh, also, uh, they are very um, worried about the, the available quantity. For example, in the Mediterranean region, they are not so uh, enthusiastic with uh, using rainwater because they don't have so much. And also, the water quality, they are, they are um, worried about that. And also, the storage uh, capacity that is uh, not um, so easy to deal with. Uh, also, we see some uh, legislative bottlenecks, so sometimes it's not so easy to implement news of new water sources. And uh, some growers, they are already uh, using uh, the most sustainable system uh, according to them. So if they are using almost uh, only rainwater and they are recirculating all the drainage, they will not change and they have already quite sustainable system. So on the water quality, uh, we have uh, some problems, but they are very specific to crops or to regions, so I will not go in detail. Um, so it's very um, localized, localized uh, problems. Um, so we, we have observed that uh, the qualitative groundwater is becoming scarce, for example, due to nutrient pollutions or uh, due to 
due to high uh, EC in the groundwater, or uh, also due to restriction, because for example now uh, in Flanders, uh, the, there, there are restrictions on the use of water, and also uh, they are becoming expensive, uh, for example, if the government taxes the groundwater. So um, the bottlenecks growers are facing, uh, for example, is if they want to use rainwater, how they can uh, dimension the water storage in relation to the, the cropping system and uh, also um, in according to the rainfall. And how, uh, if they want to use for soy bond crop, uh, how they can harvest the rainwater. Um, some socioeconomic bottlenecks that were coming back a lot, it's uh, cost and also space, space is uh, missing for growers to build a big storage. Um, and also in the, at, on the legislative level, some risk analysis are, are, uh, all, uh, are asked to the farmers uh, to be before building a big storage. And uh, on the environmental part, uh, there can be a uh, fear from uh, pesticides in rainwater. Um, so the needs, yeah, it's basically uh, the cost benefits uh, analysis and dimension tool. And so uh, about the um, better, how to use better the water uh, and nutrients. So we see that uh, the tools that are available to monitor better the water use efficiency and the nutrient use efficiency are not al always used, uh, implement at the gr grower level, sorry. Uh, so why? <laughs> so. Basically, again, this is the main reason is again the cost. For example, a lot of growers uh, are interested to do to um, make automation is this in the system, but uh, it's um, uh, it's not uh, always affordable. Uh, for example, in Mediterranean region, they are interested in that, but uh, they cannot really afford it. Um, Again, they, are, they have uh, worries about the effectiveness of uh, monitoring with tools, and um, they require some. Uh, they have uh, they fear that uh, using the tools is more time-consuming than uh, having a direct observation that they are seeing. They monitor well with the with the visual observation, and also sometimes it's not on the priority list. So. They think it's not the moment to, to use that now. Uh, also, most of some growers are, are satisfied with their current system and they, they don't uh, see why they would change and to have uh, more monitoring tools or sensors or uh, automation of the irrigation. So uh, the observation we made during these surveys is that it's not so easy to measure the water you are consuming. So the growers are not really aware of exactly how much water they're using for the crops. And uh, they know um, some references, but uh, they are not measuring it uh, continuously. And uh, for the nutrient consumption, uh, now with certification, most of, uh, for example, grow back up, you have to record your uh, nutrient consumption. So for this, they're more aware of uh, nutrient consumption. Uh, so the needs in uh, tools for monitoring water use efficiency and nutrient use efficiency are the cost effective effectiveness. Uh, they, they need that we show them that it's uh, cost effective, that they can save uh, some, some money from the water or from the uh, from the nutrient. And they need the proven effectiveness. For example, a grower will implement a technology uh, if the neighbor grower is implementing it uh, already. And also, basically, they, sh they need easy to use tools because they are very busy people and they can't uh, sp spend too much time on uh, making sensors, move sensors and making probes. Uh, so the easy and uh, the easy to use tools and without too much ma maintenance are required. Um, also, a lot of growers think they don't have the 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 size to have the investment uh, capacity to to invest uh, in better technology. They think that the, um, 
they have uh, too small farm to to invest in uh, more technology so we need uh, uh, tools that they are, they are adapted to the farm scale and to the cropping system uh, scale so about the environmental impact so we see that there is a lot of difference in the awareness on env environmental um, uh, impacts on the on the three region so for example uh, we asked uh, do you see do you Will you implement new practices to monitor better the effluence uh, in the next three years? So in the Northwest region, a lot of uh, growers are thinking about it. And in the Central Eastern, only very few, because um, the awareness is, is not really there. So they, they don't um, know very much about the impact. And uh, the, the, on the Mediterranean area, it's the awareness is rising. But what we can observe is that uh, it's, it's basically uh, linked to the, to the controls they are facing. Uh, in the Northwest, you can see the, the figures, the graphs are uh, almost the same. So they, <laughs> when they are facing uh, controls, uh, they are more um, uh, thinking about the, the new practices they can implement. So, um, on the bottlenecks uh, we found for environmental um, the, for uh, to minimize the impact on the environment uh, it was the availability of uh, solutions because uh, some uh, for example the treatment of your uh, drainage uh, before you dis discharge it is um, it's not always available to have a, a good treatment and uh, also the dimension of uh, the water flow are not adapted. Uh, so on the socio-economic, uh, we, can, we can see that there is a high pressure on horticultural activities. So the law is very focusing of, uh, on uh, horticultural uh, uh, activities and there is also uh, to have this, uh, the, this technology for minimizing the environmental use, there is a high investment needed. And on the legislative part, uh, the law is changing uh, all the time for growers, so it's very uh, difficult to, for them to adapt in time. And uh, they, have, um, uh, they need the available technologies before the law is uh, restricting them to do something. For example, uh, in the Netherlands, they need to remove the residue from wastewater flow, but there is no uh, technology approved for that. So the need is encouraging policies that the, I think uh, we saw it with, uh, in, in Britain, the encouraging policies are, are in, uh, in progress. But in some other regions, the policies are not really encouraging uh, growers, only punishing them when, when they are doing wrong. And uh, the long-term legislation is needed to have, so that the grower can have time to see uh, what big investment they will, be, uh, they will be able to do in the next years. And also, again, uh, cost-effective technology is required. And, um, uh, okay, so I will, <laughs> I will give uh, the word uh, back to my colleague. So uh, now we know what growers need. So now we have to start doing something with the needs of the growers. And that is where we are thinking out uh, on uh, yesterday. We had a meeting with Fertinoa here. And this is what we still will be continuing to do in the next month and also today with all of you. So uh, what will we do in the next steps of Fertinoa? And is find and implement solutions. And what do we want? We want to focus on exchange of technologies. I said already there are a lot of technologies available and within VP, yeah, in VP3, within the investigation uh, Esther and her colleague, colleagues made, uh, they have a lot of technologies available. They know what is where and how we should use it. We now want to exchange them and we want to exchange those technologies that can solve problems on a very short period, very short time. Uh, and each consortium member of uh, Fertinova will exchange at least one technology. So all over Europe, you will be facing uh, dissemination activities where we will exchange those technologies. We will do it for the next one to two years. So there will be a lot of uh, 
activity going on. But let me give you some example on how it will work. So we already said we will start from the growers' point of view. So what did we did in the past? We asked growers, what is your problem? What do you need? And growers said, for example, in Flanders and the Netherlands, uh, for the soilless crop of cucumber, root exudates in the drain water are causing a problem. Because if you have a soilless crop, you have root exudates in the water. And if you start recirculating it over and over again, you see that those uh, concentrations can accumulate and it can cause problems to your uh, crop quality and also to the production. So growers say we need to have a technology to remove these root exudates. So then we start thinking and we start involving other people. This is the time we are now, we start involving all of you to have a look on these problems. For example, in research, people say, okay, why don't you use activated charcoal? We use it for years in the soilless crops of lettuce, and it is working rather well. If you go to industry, people say, okay, why don't you use advanced oxidation? It's an alternative uh, for uh, activated charcoal. We didn't use it in the soilless lettuce, but maybe it's time to start thinking about it. So, time to think about it. Now we are thinking which technology will we implement and we will bear in mind all the things Esther said about what is a grower thinking about, cost, reliability of the technology, also um, not too many work to maintain the installation, etc. So now, for example, if we take the soilless crop of uh, cucumber, we already have a sand filter in the system, it's the blue tank you see. We also have a UV disinfection in the system. On the other hand, we will have uh, the soilless crop of lettuce, as we have it now in the system, a sand filter and an activated charcoal. So we take the activated charcoal from that installation, put it in the soilless crop of cucumber, and maybe our problems are solved. Or we will see if it works or not. Other alternative could be the advanced oxidation, UV and water stuff, uh, water peroxide. Uh, so that could also be an alternative. What is the timing of this? We will start thinking about these cases today and for the next months. And within 2017, we will start actually exchanging and implementing these kind of uh, technologies uh, in the several places. Then we will come back again to the growers level because we want to know if growers actually will implement it at the end. So we will start the discussion and evaluation of the technology again with the grower bridging the gap between knowledge and uh, innovation. And then it brings us to the final step. It is making a lot of noise. And we are doing it already today, and we will hope to keep doing it the next two years. Making noise, because like Esther said, growers only will start using a technology if they have seen it with their own eyes, and if their neighbor heard it and says, okay, it's working. So noise is important. Field visits and dissemination activities will be carried out very frequently the coming next two years. This event is the first one, we will have many more. We will have uh, also international workshops and uh, conferences, for example, this one, but also next year in the Netherlands. In the week of the 15th of uh, October, we will have a next uh, workshop in the Netherlands. It's in the demo kwekerije in um, Honselersdijk. So already put that in your agenda, it will be an exchange of knowledge again, and you will see the first results of the exchange technologies. We will finalize the project and bring the results of the project in Almeria in 2018. It will be a rather big event also, and really something you should not miss. Another thing you should bear in mind is that we will provide a lot of output. We will have a lot of um, output not only for growers, but also for policy makers and industry. For growers, we will have practice abstracts. Maybe that's something totally new for you, but it's very easy to explain. It's one sheet, and what does this sheet contain? It contains what is the technology, how is it working, how much does it cost, how can I implement it in my crop, which crops I can uh, implement it, and how, what, as a grower, what do I have to bear in mind to uh, maintain or to use this technology? For example, an easy example, the UV disinfection. Uh, how, much, uh, uh, how many hours can the lamp uh, be productive, etc. Things like that. 
These one pagers should give a grower a first idea on how he, if he could use the technology or he should choose for another one. So it's a starting point to select technologies. We will put those technologies on the website of Fertinoa, but we also will put it on all partners' uh, websites. So I would say pay a visit to our website. Um, that is very nice to do. There's a lot of information on it, and there will be even more information in the coming weeks and months. We also have an electronic newsletter. If you want to get involved in Fertino, to know where we are active, to know about our dissemination activities, it's very easy. Go to the website, subscribe for the newsletter, and every three to six months you will receive an email with all our activities. And then also there will be a lot of articles in the press uh, about our activities and uh, what the results will be. This is Fertinoa, and what will be your role today uh, for Fertinoa? It's very simple. Tell us everything you want. Tell us your story. If you are a grower, tell us what are your needs. What bottlenecks are you facing? Tell us what we should know about your situation. To the industry and the policy makers, but also to the researchers, I would say, tell us what you think we can implement from your research, from your company, and what we should bear in mind um, discussing about technologies from, for example, policy view, uh, point of view. But also a, re, uh, an, a question to you, please bear in mind to have the glasses of the growers also when you have your discussion today. Try to think as a grower and then I think we can come to a very nice workshop this afternoon and we can have a very productive uh, result of this uh, meeting. So. If there are any questions, I think, don't know if there is time left, um, but then Esther and I will try to, oh, Esther is leaving, that's not, you. <laughs> so uh, if there are any questions, please ask, and otherwise don't be afraid to ask us afterwards. Uh, we're happy to uh, answer any time. Uh, y a-t-il des questions? We won't bite. Une question simple et pratique. Est-ce que les, les communications qui vont être faites dans les newsletters, le site internet, les fiches pratiques vont être traduites dans toutes les langues des pays européens Ça, c'est une bonne question. Ça, et on discute beaucoup de ça parce que. Il y a besoin de traduction dans beaucoup de langues. Euh, on va essayer de traduire le, le plus important pour chaque région. Donc ça veut dire qu'on va traduire, euh, par exemple, les, les pratiques abstraites qui sont relevantes pour les, les personnes de, de France, les producteurs français. Et aussi, euh, il y a beaucoup de partenaires euh, espagnols. Donc les plus importantes langues d'Europe, de, on a des, des produits pour ça. Euh, mais on ne peut pas dire qu'on peut euh, traduire tout. Mais le plus important pour chaque région, on va essayer de traduire dans la langue le plus important. Donc oui. Une question complémentaire. Euh, en termes de communication, est-ce que vous prévoyez euh, des actions précises sur des salons comme Green Tech ou le CIVAL ou d'autres événements j'ai un grand consortium euh, qui travaille avec, euh, pour euh, Fertinova. Donc c'est le but de, de participer à beaucoup d'événements comme ça. Et de présenter tous euh, les, les résultats et euh, aussi les, les choses qu'on va ex euh, exchange. Euh, donc oui, euh, il y a beaucoup de participants pour ça, beaucoup d'actions. Et aussi, si vous avez, vous avez des euh, événements, n'hésitez pas de nous euh, inviter, de nous envoyer un email ou quelque chose comme ça et on peut, le, peut essayer de, de participer. Donc. Ok. C'est bon. S'il n'y a pas d'autres questions, 